Hello everyone. So today we're gonna discuss or talk about the infrastructure required to train the latest frontier LLMs, GPT-4, Gemini Ultra, Road 3 Opus, Llama 3 for 105 billion. Obviously, I don't have inner um, details about these. I'd be discussing what was shared in blog posts and the latest Llama 3 paper. So this is like my take on the infrastructure required. This is a graph shared by Semi Analysis. Um, there is like this uh, different models released over the years, the different flops required. As we can see, like the latest models are all clustered here in the range between 10 to the uh, 25th uh, flops to the 10 to 20th. We didn't really reach this area yet. And this is, there is actually a race that is being, that's happening in this uh, current moment with Elon Musk tweeting that uh, by the end of the year, they would have a 100k liquid cooled connected H100 cluster, which would be uh, the biggest. Uh, but there is like the different labs like Microsoft, Google, uh, and ByteDance, different companies are racing to have this 100k H100 cluster. So to put that into perspective, GPT-4, that was like, had like this big hype when it was released in March 2023, was trained in rumors, like that's not conferred by OpenAI, but the rumors say that it was trained using 20,000 E100, but building a cluster with 100k H100 would give us a 31 a 31.5x increase in the computation by the FB8 uh, training enabled by the new ship, uh, which is H100. So imagine 32x increase in compute. What would that give us on top of what GPT-4 uh, offers? So the design of the cluster is the shared uh, meta uh, uh, cluster design that was used to train the Llama 3 405 billion parameters. They built a cluster of 24k H100s and to like to build a cluster of that size you can't just simply connect each GPU to each other uh, in, in a full bisection uh, bandwidth connection which means you're just utilizing the full connection possible which is around 400 gigabits per second you need uh, to make a trade-off which means there some gpus would be connected to each other at full bisection bandwidth which is called gpus within a single island while other gpus uh, would be located in another island and in case of meta's 24k cluster they have eight islands and they connect them using switches. They have aggregating switches and they make a trade off by having seven to one over subscription to the top layer aggregator nodes or spines. So that the, these switches or like sending a data or gradients over one GPU in one island to one, another GPU in one island would be 7x slower than sending the, these gradients in, in GPUs within the same island. So this is a trade-off. This is the design for 24K cluster with going up to 100 H100K connected with each other within one cluster. You can imagine there would be more trade-offs. So to, uh, to optimally utilize these trade-offs, you need to be aware of three techniques that are used in distributed large language models training, which are called the 3D parallels. I will quickly, uh, quickly throw, go through them. First one is data parallelism, where in an imaginary world, you just saved the, a full model weights and parameters and everything 
uh, in a single GPU memory uh, and then you would do that for the different GPUs you have and you would divide the amounts of data uh, or micro batches uh, on the GPUs each one would calculate the gradients and then an all reduce would be done to update the gradients but obviously with like models Lama 3 being 405 billion parameters GPT-4 being rumors 1.8 trillion parameters that is not simply possible uh, so that's the first one second one is tensor parallelism which divides uh, the tensors or weights within a tensor into smaller tensors so imagine like a 4x uh, tensor you would send the first second and third and fourth uh, section of rows into different gpus and then you would do the calculations and then you would combine over different gpus as you can imagine this would require the most amount of communication that's why it's useful to do it within uh, on a single h100 server so that is like a lower level uh, than a single island uh, third type of parallelism is pipeline parallelism which means that you have your model have different layers so for example transformer has attention layers stacked up over uh, full uh, or feed forward networks so what you would do is each gpu would responsible for one layer it would does it will do like its forward pass or backward pass and then send the output to the next layer these three types of parallelisms are used for training or distributed training and to fully utilize the infrastructure you have you have to intelligently use each one in the most optimal way so as i mentioned tensor parallelism requires the most amount of communication you would put that on a single h100 server which is which connects eight gpus and then the next type is pipeline parallelism requires the second most communication so you would put the, them single island while data parallelism requires the least amount of communication so that you can easily uh, boot the, uh, design it so that you can do data parallelism or across different islands so these are the different types of parallelism you would obviously uh, going back to this you would need gpus you would need network cables or transceivers you need switches and you would need storage you would need to store two things specifically the data set that you would train on in case of llama they are using 15.6 trillion parameters uh, tokens sorry and you need to store checkpoints so over the training period in llama's case it's 54 days failures will happen so you would need to save checkpoints so that in case of failure you can go, go back to the last saved checkpoint think about it like a game if you die within like a certain level um, if you like have like the memory and you have checkpoint where you last uh, like finish the level you would go you would go like to the la last level instead of starting the game from a better beginning uh, not the best analogy but I hope you get it so last thing is the interruptions so meta trained for 54 days in a 54 days they have they reported around 500 to 600 interruptions in their uh, really great paper i would uh, encourage you like to take a look at this paper it's pretty detailed about everything and on the infrastructure failure side about 50 percent of the failures was related to gpus so you see the category so they recommend that uh, and also like there's other company called imbu that trained their model lm from scratch they recommend that you would have around 10 to 20 percent spare gpus uh, so that in case of a gpu failure you would just exclude the gpu and include one other from the spare nodes so meta built a 24,000 h100 cluster but they trained it only on 16,000 H100s. So they had like 8K GPUs um, spare. 
uh, but uh, not all not all people have this amount of uh, cash to build this cluster so there are like these interruptions uh, they are reported they mostly gpus but other notable are the networks uh, there's something called network flabbing where the switches would uh, switch or like move from on and off which disrupt the communication between between the different networks and there's like uh, simple stuff like ssds cpus but these are on the uh, last scale so that was a premiere about infrastructure and interruptions i hope you benefit from this video uh, and see you in the next video thank you